Hi Thinkers, welcome to the data science course on thinkxacademy.com. Uh, in this video, we are going to understand the concept of data aggregation by using the pandas window rolling. And this uh, concept is very important and we are going to use uh, stock prices data set because uh, it is really very applicable in the data science. So you will be looking at these data sets very often in your data science career and even for uh, machine learning algorithms, uh, this stock uh, data is very important to uh, to actually work on, right? So we're going to start with uh, uh, the first thing, which is importing uh, importing the libraries, which is the uh, pandas library and uh, the numpy library, and then we are going to use the uh, library which is actually the ipython library which will help us in displaying the rows uh, and columns of the data set in a very uh, good way so i am going to write here from ipython dot display we are going to import display here Right, so uh, after this, we are also going to do some analysis on uh, uh, the graph analysis. So we will require matplot library, which is used to uh, plot the figures on the graph. So uh, what we will do is we will apply aggregation and we will be able to see how aggregation is actually changing the graph and how that, uh, that will actually give us a lot of information uh, about the analysis and everything that we have done in data aggregation. So uh, I'm going to quickly uh, import uh, matplot library dot pyplot right and here I'm going to use an alias which is plt and then we're going to write the symbol matplot lib inline right so now we have done with the importing part now let's uh, see what we can do to perform data aggregation using the uh, window rolling functions in pandas so the first thing is we need to actually uh, import the data set here and i have already given uh, the link to the data set that we're going to use today in the description of this video so you can check that out uh, so basically I will create a data frame here which is df and since the data is actually a CSV format and the name of the data set is actually stock and it should be prices.csv right so this is the whole data set and I'm going to quickly print out the first five six elements so that you can take a look at the data set okay so it is giving us here it should be matplotlib okay so here you can see this is the data set that we have instead of print let's use display that will be much better so here you can see we have this data set we have the symbol and we have the date so this type of data set is also known as time series data set because it has time associated in every row, right? So you are going to deal with time series data set a lot in data science. For example, there are precipitation based data set and there are a lot of data sets which deal with time, right? So there you will see and um, here in this video, you will get an exposure of uh, this time series data set also so uh, this is the date which is mentioned here uh, the symbol represents the company which has uh, the stock and these are the uh, v uh, values here which is open high low close and volume so these are the values that we have in here so uh, now let's move on to um, another important things which is to actually find out what is the shape of this data set and we are going to do that simply by using uh, df.shape and you can see there are so many rows and there are seven columns right so uh, we need to obviously decrease this we are not going to do the analysis of uh, 4,97,000 rows right so 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to only pick up a, uh, a single company and uh, we will analyze the stock of that company. So I will pick Apple and the symbol of Apple is AAPL. So uh, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually write DF equals to DF dot LOC func uh, LOC which is basically the uh, locator and here I'm going to uh, just specify the symbol and in the symbol I will just specify that I want only the rows which has uh, Apple stocks right so this is going to be only Apple stocks okay so if I will write display df.head you can see here we have uh, I'm going to hit enter and here you can see uh, it is showing us an error so it should be not just symbol it should be df and here inside these square brackets we will have to specify the column which is the symbol column and the value is uh, should be equal to this right so now you can see that in the symbol part we have only apple here which is the apple stocks and if i will now try to print the shape of this df uh, which is the data frame you can see now i have only 1000 rows right so now i have decreased some of the rows here so if i try to see here as a, as a data scientist as a data analyst you will have to uh, perform these uh, spe these methods to see how your data set and the shape of the data set is changing very often right so whenever you apply any operation uh, make sure you take a look at what has changed inside of your data frame uh, so here uh, if I print the first 20 rows so you can see here I will use display so these are the first 20 rows and you can observe here in the date we have the year 2014 here right you can see the dates are here so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick up the stocks where the date is only of the year uh, 2014 right so the way to do is is very simple we will use the same method we which we have used in the line above which is here right so here we have used this now we can use the similar uh, thing here also so what I want is I want the date should be uh, less than let's say uh, any date um, between so I will write less than equals to symbol here and here I will specify the date uh, bef uh, so it will pick up all the rows which has date lesser than the one I'm going to specify here and make sure to use the same uh, um, the same format as in the data set so here we have 2014 so I'm going to write here 2015 and 01-01 so all the dates that come uh, before this are going to come here right so I will write here now display df dot head 20 rows right so the moment I do this you can see we, uh, we have these rows and here we will have to check the shape uh, of this data set because that is going to tell us whether uh, we are having only the dates which are uh, which are coming in the year 2014 right so quickly do df dot shape right so now you can see we have only 252 rows here right so now we have the stocks of apple which are in the year 2014 right so now we are going to perform data aggregation of the whole uh, but before that what i would like to do is i will uh, be picking up uh, only one single column we know that this data set has seven columns so what i will be doing is i'm uh, going to perform the data aggregation on a single column uh, so uh, let's pick up a single column uh, let's say we pick up close as a single column right so I'm going to pick up only one column here which is the close so what I can do is I will instead of this I'm going to create another data frame which is 
df2 and i'm going to create a new data frame by using pd dot data frame and here i'm just going to provide it with the column of df right which is the close one now if i will try to uh, quickly display the uh, this df2 dot head let's say 20 rows and if i hit this you can see that now we have uh, the rows uh, which is close and here you can see i have all of these rows right and remember that these rows are only including the apple stocks with the year 2014 right so here instead of this if i try to write shape right let's print the shape of this data frame which is df2 dot shape so now you can see here we have the same number of rows which is 252 but here we have only one column which is the close one so we are going to apply the uh, uh, data aggregation to this close column only so uh, now what i'm going to do is uh, let's say we want to apply uh, data aggregation to the close uh, so i'm going to write here we are going to apply data aggregation on close column and let's say i'm going to calculate the seven day average right so what i'm going to do is uh, in the close column i will take the create a window which will have a window size of seven and what will happen is we will apply the concept of aggregation uh, we will apply mean to the a window and what will happen is it will compute the average and it will append it update it to the first column right so let's see how we can do that first of all i'm going to create a new column in df2 and i will call it as avg underscore 7 which is the average of 7 and this is the data frame 2 which we have in here all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say that df dot close dot rolling right so i'm going to apply the rolling window concept or aggregation to the uh, close uh, column so i'm going to specify here a close of the df2 frame and in this i will have to specify a bunch of things which are uh, first of all i will have to specify some of the parameters the first one is the window size so i will have to specify the window size here which is 7 because we want to calculate the 7 day average so the window size will initially start uh, we will have to give it the minimum number of records that this window can have so for that we are going to use uh, min periods and we can say that the minimum periods will be 1 now this parameter is very important because uh, the minimum size of the window if it is uh, one then only it will apply so let's say i remove this uh, min periods uh, i will show you what exactly this mean uh, and here i will simply apply the mean here right so you can see that we are doing nothing here we, we are just applying the rolling window concept and we are computing mean of the seven call uh, seven rows right which are the seven days so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to first uh, display the df2 dot head right so let's see the first 10 rows of this column and you can quickly see here that we have another column here with the name avg7 and you can see here in the first six entries this is the first one this is the second third fourth fifth sixth and here in the seventh entry you can see the average is computed so what it does is it has created a window size of seven so the first seven uh, values of this column close is taken right so these are the first seven uh, rows of this uh, close column it will compute the average and what it will do is it will append or update it at this place right so we don't want this what we want is we want that it should append it in the first one so 
instead of having a window uh, size of uh, 7 and we will we can specify here min periods equals to 1 so what this actually does is if I specify min periods equals to 1 the window size will be initially 1 and the maximum size of the window can be 7 right so instead of act, uh, you can see that when the window size will come to the first record it is not going to compute the mean in the second record also it won't do that when the size of the window will become uh, 7 when it has 7 rows then only it is going to compute the mean right we don't want that we want that uh, the minimum period even if there is one single row uh, that is the minimum number of rows a window can hold uh, then compute the mean right so we want to uh, just apply that concept here so if i try to hit control enter now you can see the things are different here you can see this value is actually it remains same here this is same and here you can see that it has applied the aggregation so in the first two rows it takes the average and it appends it on the top and here it also does the same thing so it is applying these uh, things here uh, again and again now what i want to do is uh, instead of uh, uh, just making sure that this uh, 79.0185 you can see that the first row remains unchanged right there is no change in the first row in the second row you can see there is a change here it was 77 and here it is 78 now what is happening is when the window size is equals to 1 because we have specified min periods equals to 1 so we are actually telling the program that uh, we uh, the window can actually hold minimum number of 1 uh, you can say uh, row right so here it has one row but you can uh, see here that if you you cannot compute the mean of only one single uh, value right so that's why it's same here when the window size is increased to 2 you can see that the average of these two numbers is this so it gets appended here right and similarly when the window size will be 3 the average is computed and it is appended here the same things goes on and on and when the window size become equals to 7 it will shift one row ahead and it will keep shifting one row ahead and it will keep doing the seven day rolling averages right so what i want to do here is this value and this first row is same so what i can do is i can align this uh, average column at the center right it has uh, i can move it one way upward by using this simple trick uh, by specifying this parameter known as center equals to true right so if i do that now you can see that it is actually it has moved uh, it is actually lying it to the center right so now you can see that the values are uh, all of the values are changing here so it is optional if you want to align the window at the center you can do that if you don't want that by default it is false so uh, that's one thing that's how you can apply uh, the rolling averages right so you can calculate the rolling averages in this line in this single line here we have uh, specified the window size and we have also specified the minimum number of periods so uh, let's say you want uh, you don't want this uh, you don't want the minimum size of the window to be 1 you want it to be 7 so one thing that you can do is if I hit control enter if you don't want this uh, these null values and you want to shift these 7 way up what you can do is you can simply use the shift function and that will uh, work in some cases it it is not working here but I think if you put this one here let's specify i think we will have to specify a value here let's specify minus seven yeah so we need to specify minus seven and it is going to shift the values one way upwards right so let's specify minus five and let's see yeah so if, spec if you specify minus five there is one value here so instead of minus 7 specify minus 6 okay so now this is actually we don't have any null values here so now we are good to go now let's see 
how this average which we have computed is actually better than the original close column. Uh, the way to do is, is very simple. We will have to use uh, matplot library uh, using visualization. We can do that. Uh, so here uh, we are going to do a very simple thing which is visualization of the data. So data visualization is a whole, uh, you can say a whole uh, different part of this data science course which we will uh, cover in the upcoming tutorials. But here in this video you will get an idea of how data visualization and plotting of graph is done. So let's do this and uh, this will also help us in understanding the importance of data aggregation. Uh, so here the first thing uh, I need to do is I will have to specify plt.figure. I will have to specify the uh, width of this uh, figure which is I will specify as uh, the size of this figure will be equal to 15 comma let's say 10 right so i specified the size of this figure you can make it 10 comma 5 also if you want a smaller figure so it is the height and width of this figure that we are going to plot on the graph and here what we need to do is the next thing is to specify if you want the grid to be there so you can do that by using uh, this plt.grid so if you have specified true here what is going to happen is in the graph you will see grid like structures which will basically help you in uh, mapping and in, in a lot of stuff right so uh, now let's move on to the plotting part which is to use the plot function right so plot function will actually plot a line on the graph or the curve on the graph and uh, we have the points of this data frame too so we can specify that now uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to specify uh, the column close because we are only focusing on close column so df2.close and here i'm going to specify a label as close right so the first thing i'm doing is i'm picking up this column close and all these points and i'm going to plot them on the graph uh, so that i can analyze what are the values of the close on the graph right so i will just plot it using plot dot legend and i will specify location equals to two and i will hit control enter and now quickly you can see here that I've got this curve here, right? I, if I want, I can increase the size of this figure. Let's increase it to 20 and 15 so that it will be much bigger, right? So now you can see this is a bigger graph. So what is uh, what you can see here is grid-like structure is there. You can see this is the close parameter of the data frame DF2 and on plotting, it has got this type of graph. Now, one thing uh, you can notice about this graph is this graph is spiky in nature, right? You can see a lot of spikes are there in this graph. Spikes are actually uh, causes lot of problems in data analysis and in even in machine learning algorithms, even you have if you have studied machine learning, you know that these pointy graphs are not good for the classification algorithms or regression algorithms. So uh, we, uh, we are going to see that this is actually a spiky graph and let's see how data aggregation, uh, what is the graph of the data aggregation, right? So uh, let's plot another line. You can plot multiple lines on this single graph using plot function. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify here the column average seven, right? So, and I will name the label as seven day average so seven day average and i will hit control enter okay so let's just make it avg underscore seven and hit control enter okay so it is saying there is no such column here okay so here we should have done this and this should be removed from here okay so 
Uh, now let's take a look at the graph, uh, this orange graph here. You can see in the label, the blue line represents the close column and the orange line or the yellow line represents the uh, seven day average. You can clearly see here in the graph that the close line is very spiky in nature, right? So if you take a look at this yellow line, it is not that much spiky. You can see that there are some spikes, but there are not a lot of spikes. So what I can conclude from here is that this graph of average of seven day average is much, much better. If you analyze only the seven day average here, you can see that spikes are still there, but these are much better than the previous one where you will see spikes everywhere in the graph, right? So uh, it becomes uh, very easier to do the analysis also. So instead of using mean, you can use uh, standard deviation and you can use different different stuff to uh, analyze these graphs. So you can see here, this is that spiky graph here. And if you want, you can use NumPy uh, uh, operations also. So instead of uh, specifying mean, what you can do is if you want to use NumPy, you can use the aggregate function and inside aggregate you just need to specify the uh, numpy operation so if you want numpy.mean you can do that right it will give you the same result as here so here i'm going to again write this line here close close right so one thing that you can test out here i'm giving you a task is uh, you can actually calculate the three day average, plot it on the graph and take a look at how much that graph is spiky in nature. One thing you should remember is if instead of seven day average, let's say I take a 20 day average and if I try to plot this on the graph, now you can see that this graph is a lot more smoother, right? There are lesser spikes, but there is one more thing which is that this graph is not actually near about to the points of the original column, which was uh, the close column. So this is an interesting fact here that uh, we want a smoother curve, but that does not mean that we will plot a straight line or a curve, which is not even uh, pertaining to this, all the points in this graph, right? So uh, plotting should be done in a way that the original graph and the average you have taken they look similar and they are not too much uh, having uh, the distance between the original column and the seven day average or 20 day average should not be large, right? Which you can see here. And uh, if you will write here seven day average, this graph as you can see, now this much, this is actually uh, a lot much better than the 20 day average because it is actually following the same pattern right you can see the pattern is smoother and also similar to the close column so that's how you can test out with different different uh, uh, stocks you can uh, you can pick up a different stock and you can analyze it uh, if you want you can increase the years here so if you want 2017 you can do that and uh, you can see graphs will be different in these cases right you can see in 2017 now this is the yellow line and if you will increase the window size to 20 and now you hit control enter you can see now this graph is also uh, much better than this graph right so this is how you can do more testing if you want so basically that's all for this tutorial uh, thanks for watching